looks like we are ready to go. Optic Zero asking, how can we keep playing the same maps? This was a predetermined map rotation so that we could get all the brand new PTSL maps in there that were created specifically for this by Prodigy. So that is why some of the same maps will come up. Unfortunately, it just looks like Optic Zero and Select happened into the same set of maps. So, yeah, <laughs> it looks like everyone is about ready to go. And we're going to get started momentarily, maybe. Select and Optic Zero showing their frustration um, because the maps are not shared bases, I suppose. This one definitely doesn't have shared bases. This is actually the one we saw earlier today where you kind of have the four points of the cardinal and it's sort of equal distances between your teammate and your enemies. So mm -hmm. uh, could be tough again for Select and Optic Zero unless they switch it up a little bit. At least let loser pick the map. Interesting suggestion there from Select. All right. So it looks like Pythonus and Dali are ready to go. Yeah. And... Normally, normally tournaments don't just uh, change the rules there in the middle, <laughs> especially since we're so far along already. So Select really should not be expecting them to get any favoritism just because they happen to play Protoss and Terran. And it looks like uh, Select asking about off-racing in the future and Artivan saying that those are going to be considerations. Now bear in mind the PTSL is not going to be a one-time event. It is going to develop over other seasons and uh, hopefully the response to this will be very, very good. I have, frankly, really enjoyed watching these games. You know, you don't often get a chance to watch the professional players uh, tackle 2v2 a lot, so this is a nice opportunity to see that. I agree, of course. It's a very, very unique tournament. We need to get some more eyeballs on this right now. Go tell everyone on Twitter, Facebook, any of your buddies who enjoy watching StarCraft 2. This is sort of like a once, I won't say once in a lifetime, because they are planning to do more in the future, but really I've never seen anything like it before, and I'm actually enjoying it quite immensely. But we do have Dignitas Select. He is the Blue Terran right now on the far right side, the east side of Deconstructed, and Optic Zero is his teammate, the Pink Protoss. Over on the other side, we've got MYM Dolly playing as Noodles right now, playing from Europe. He doesn't have his own North American account, and neither does his teammate, MYM Pythonus, playing here as Kaoru. He is the light blue Terran, so both Terrans actually sh choosing shades of blue. Always exciting <laughs> to try and figure out what's happening later on in the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that, that gets annoying. I, I especially... It really annoys me whenever you have Zerg players that do that, because Zerglings are like 99% brown, and so whenever you have like pink versus pink purple. Pink versus red, or yeah, purple exactly. versus pink, or oh. orange versus red. I pretty much just yell yellow. at the screen, and then when I see one person win, I'm like, ah, yeah. there you go! Whatever's left at the end, you'll know they won. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So Major Makers is in a pretty good position right now. We've already seen that Subsuns is frustrated at the moment, maybe playing on Tilt as well. Looks like Select is going to go right after that quick refinery again, so possibly teching up to uh, early cloaked Banshees. This is something we've seen out of him now, I guess, three games in a row. So I don't know if he is going to alter up his strategy a little bit. I think he and Optic Zero need to be a little more concerned about getting out just a few early units. Uh, this is a much smaller ramp, so it should be easier to defend. It should be easier to bulk up that ramp against early Zerglings and things like that. But look at this. A uh, Forge Fast Expand coming up for it. Optic Zero? How could he justify that <laughs> in a 2v2 where they keep getting owned by early rushes? And there's so much entry for for the other team. So a Forge Fast Expand just would confuse me highly. And if he does it, then I don't know. What, it, what we're going to see out of Dolly and Pythonus. If they even do the same unit composition they just did with the Speedlings and Marauders, there's no way a Forge Fast Expand will be able to hold that off. Cannon Rush? Cannon Rush would be a lot more uh, acceptable and expected. And it looks like we have another pylon coming down here on the low ground. He's about to have he enough minerals for up. an expansion. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so this <laughs> does appear so it's really going to be a Forge Fast Expand. There's 400, and... Drop three gateways. <laughs> there's a photon cannon, and... Yeah, I mean, he's just bunkering up for a Forge Fast Expand. Okay. So, let's see. Dolly, on the other hand, he is going into Zergling Speed right away. Pulled all of his drones off of gas as well. So, he's not going to be mining that. Just trying to get as many minerals as possible. Optic Zero does indeed have his Nexus down. Select, on the other hand, he is going towards a quick factory once again. He is bunkering himself in pretty effectively, though. Like I said, it would be a lot easier to get up a stout wall here because of that very small ramp. But man, I don't know. 
cloak span. She says not worked out for well for him in the past two games. Someone's building a command center already. It looks like Pythonus also doing a quick-ish expand, but uh, not a you know not something as bold as a Forge Fest expand. I'm not sure where. Optic Zero is going to go with this next. Still, they're just now getting his first gateway build at four and a half minutes in, while his opponent Dolly also expanding over there at the natural select is actually going to be the last one to try and do any expanding. Instead, going for that starport, very very close to Pythonus's base. There is an Overlord sort of in spotting range right there. It could be a narrow miss, but um, Pythonus doesn't actually have too much in the way of anti-air. He's actually getting concussive shells and marauders out first to try and deal with uh, Optic Zero. And Rotorn coming up for Dolly. Obviously, no anti-air in that option either, so this this could be the, the time for the Cloak Banshee to, uh, to shine here. Yeah, certainly, actually. It could work out pretty well. I don't think there's an engineering bait down yet for Pythonus. No, nothing in the way of that, so he's not going to have detection beyond his orbital commands. He is saving up a lot of energy, though. That is actually a surprising amount of energy. Um, let's see. Down here, he is. Uh, Pythonus is sending out a Marauder and a Marine. There is sufficient protection, though, for Select. You won't have to worry about that. Uh, Optic Zero, on the other hand, he's putting down his Cybernetic score. He's defended by three Photon Cannons, four Photon Cannons, as a matter of fact. And he is going to have quite a bit of gas intake here in a second as well. So, very, very interesting. Unfortunately, this Marine is sitting right outside of the range of those Photon Cannons. <laughs> and that's the... Uh sort of uh, Achilles heel of the Forge Press Expand. Range units destroy it. So, yes. uh, Marine and Marauder combination there going to be just fine. It's not even a single but I don't know if you can sell it right there. It's really popping out here in a moment. There's already a custom built to speed it, so you can dance around them. If he notices it, there he goes. Pulling away these Marines. The custom build doesn't even have to move. The Marauder just pounding away out of his hand. Back to the Cybernetic Score. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cybernetic Score is going to fall momentarily. There's another one coming up right behind it. Not we're trying to make this engineering work. We do have our first Banshee making its way in, though. Looks like an engineering bay was finished up, uh, and uh, Pythonus is trying to put down a missile turret as fast as he can. Nice job by Selecto to pick up all the SDGs that were going after these two constructors, and he will eventually stop the construction of those. All of this is now going to be spent towards defending the natural, but this has effectively nullified the advantage of this fast expand from Pythonus. Now, granted, he does have double orbital commands, which means he is going to be able to um, drop, some drop down extra mule scans, etc. Yeah, but I mean, still, most of that effect has gone away. And some Marines are now out. He was He's got a turret, he's got some scans available, he's got those mobile marines to help out against the Banshee and effectively uh, nullified anything so it's going to be able to move on with that Banshee. There it goes. And also an overseer coming from his teammate Dolly to come help out, and he will need that here to clear out the Banshee that's now terrorizing his main in the production pad. I'm seeing another Stargate from Mafia Zero. His wall, uh, his wall off. He actually lost another gateway there, it looks like, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's about it. Once he got in range of the cannons, there was not much uh, that Pythonus, MYM Pythonus, was actually able to do there. And it looks like Select is going to have up another Banshee, and this is actually pretty good timing if he's able to pick off this SEV in the next five seconds. Oh no! He didn't walk up to it. Oh well, the missile turret's going to finish. Uh, but that's okay. He is going to be able to use that Banshee for DPS eventually. Dolly, on the other hand, is uh, expanding once again here to the middle of the map. He will be on three bases momentarily, getting up a good-sized Roach Force. Take a look at the Units tab, and wow, i got to say that Select and Optic Zero are quite far behind because they have been texting so aggressively. And there we go. This Missile Turret does go down. Is another SCD going to be brought in? No. Uh, now, that Banshee is in detection range, but he's going to be able to pick off the number of units. Very nice job. A couple more entities are going to fall. Um, Pythonus is going to try and do whatever he can as far as putting this missile turret up, and it does manage that thing. Yeah, <laughs> very effective defense. He lost a few SCVs. If you want to pull up the worker count, we'll see exactly. Uh, just har yeah, harvesters or whatever. There we go. Uh, 24 SCVs compared to 36 with Select, so he did do quite a bit of damage. 51 probes from Optic Zero. I guess that's kind of the force that I understand. Uh, right. Chrono boost available for those workers, but was that an overseer or just an overlord? That was an overlord. And 
now the scene obviously getting lifted up and destroyed and trying to nullify all the anti-air here. There's some war crawler action there, and another one being drawn with all these overlords just huddled into one little oh, spot with no, no mobile anti-air, just as war crawlers and there is maybe a handful of marines headed over there, but um, no, actually they're gonna try and do some attacking action while the sequences are away from home. Single siege tank here for select rhythm tank for these stimulus marines and marauders tank goes down pretty quickly now. SCV is in trouble. Running back into select main is another siege tank on the high ground. That could actually be pretty effective. The SCV is just hanging out there trying to shoot a lot of marines from getting up the ramp. The tank still standing, racking up some kills, eight kills already. Uh, so select is going to live through this. Opting zero going to be clutch and void ray showing up there, just snagging a couple of double kills as well. So uh, looks like Subsun is actually still staying alive. Yes, they are, as a matter of fact, and they actually nullified that attack pretty well, and with the decreased production there of Pythonus, they actually have a fighting chance. Um, now, if these Phoenixes come right back and keep picking off units and continue to do economic damage, they're actually going to be in a pretty good spot. In fact, because of their tech advantage, I would even say they have the lead, as long as they can do another round of economic damage here, and it looks like that that is exactly what Optic Zero wants to do, He's catching up to all of these roaches as well, taking apart this army for Dolly. Dolly actually dropping Quite, quite considerably. Optic Zero is starting to pull ahead. Now we have a couple of Void Rays here as well. Uh, one Void Ray may fall pretty quickly. Is he going to? It's so close. It does go down. But uh, Optic Zero well, he actually doesn't have enough energy to pick up anything else at all. Needs to save that up. And that could come with a loss of the air units. Yeah, that second Void Ray being killed off as well. Phoenix is none of them with enough energy for Graviton Beams. Obviously not very useful in this situation aside from killing those overlords and obviously MYM Dolly is smart enough. He's hovering his overlords over spore crawlers by this point instead of just corralling them in the middle of nowhere. Right. But um, if on the production tab I see Select now moving into uh, Tank Marine with a medevac composition that's going to allow him to start dropping all over the place on his MYM opponents. Otherwise, we see Hydralisk Den just now completing, Pathogen Glands being researched, Burrow being researched. He's wow. doing a round of all sorts of upgrades, getting his first wave of Hydralisks out, and soon, once Pathogen Glands hits the proper timing, probably going to be seeing some investors coming out as well. I think that Dolly probably has the strongest economy since Optic Zero did have a quick lead and is just now getting his third base up while well, Dolly's been on three for a little while. Yeah, he's definitely caught up in drones. So. Uh, soon going to be seeing another swing, perhaps. These Phoenixes losing their sort of advantage the longer this game goes on. Yep, absolutely, and that's why Optic Zero is actually moving over to Mass Void right now. Uh, he does have quite a number out. There they are. Wow. Joined at the base, so he has five, six, now seven Void Rays out, and that's going to be pretty powerful as long as he doesn't forget about that one. There we go. And he's going to be able to make a pretty powerful air attack here. Smart decision out of Pythonus to go to Mass Marines. Uh, but, you know, i got to say, the Mass Marines are going to be very good against the air, but Select is going over to a heavy tank build, and that should help them neutralize that number quite effectively. And I think that this is a 